Okay, for this project I'm going to be um, showing you how to use a stepper motor. And this is a very basic um, program. And all it's going to do is just turn the stepper motor around in circles. Um, um, actually, later on I'll also show you at the end of the, the video, I'll show you how to do a, a program that will allow you to input a variety of um, steps or, or um, values to, to cause the stepper motor to move left and right. Um, as many times as you want in a lookup table reference type thing um, all with a little tiny chip like that that's all I've got is a battery a chip stepper motor and a board so obviously I have not got a driver for this stepper motor and this is just a demonstration video so really the driver is what makes this stepper motor pull its full potential I'm only pulling enough to maybe um, rotate something like maybe I'll I'll rotate my big pen here around in circles and I'll show you how it works but yeah if you want to get full potential um, this is just a good instruction video on how to make a stepper motor work you'll have to install a driver chip on the other side of this to make it so that you get full potential anyhow um, let's go out of here um, a stepper motor like this this has four wires um, you can do the same project with a six wire stepper motor but not a five wire um, a four wire stepper motor looks like this inside. Um, it has two coils and each coil is independent and they usually have maybe anywhere from 2 ohms to maybe 30 ohms of resistance across them so it's easy to find out which two belong with each other by putting a, an ohm meter on these, these wires. But um, the way steps are or the way this motor actually turns is you apply a voltage to each one of these coils back and forth until you get it to rotate one way or the other. Um, for instance, if you add a positive and a negative there and maybe a positive and a negative there a second time and then you come back and you add positive and negative here and maybe a, a positive and negative there, you'll gradually step this motor left or right. I, you know, every motor is a little different but you, you'll figure it out when you start moving it. Um, and that's what we want to do is we want to just um, feed pulses into these windings to force the stepper motor to turn left or right. Um, so the first one I'll do will be just to get the whole thing moving so you have an idea how a stepper motor works. And um, let me just pull up my MP lab here. And I've saved, that's fine. Um, I've saved a very small program here. <laughs> um, this one has about 24, 25 lines and this is what we will use. And this is how it's arranged. I'll explain all these little lines briefly. Um, this one right here sets up the, the port. And um, this particular port is set up as two outputs, um, two inputs, two outputs, and then obviously there's nothing else there. But I've decided that for this stepper motor here. Um, I will use um, maybe port 0, I mean GP0 maybe on this one, GP1 on this, GP4 on this leg, and GP5 on this one. And if you're curious, GP0 uh, is right there. It's the pin 7, GP1 is pin 6, and you can see GP4 is 3 and GP5 is 2. So I just wire those directly onto the stepper motor. Um, I'll let you know that yeah, driving these things is kind of a little bit crazy because there's a lot of what they call EMF coming off of a stepper motor and that comes back at the tiny little chip here. And um, I will throw a, cap, a large capacitor on there just to filter it out. Maybe. Maybe not. But uh, definitely I do not want to use um, some of the brownout detection circuitry inside here because it will detect the, all the EMF that's coming off here causing problems. Um, don't worry about that. We'll explain it later. Okay, so here we are. So I've got my port set up with um, outputs on 0 and 1 as well as uh, bits 4 and 5. Okay. So anyhow, down here, this instruction here, um, this is the bulk of everything. And what this does is 
um, this uh, incrementing register 20 is actually just a tracking register that gets incremented so I can create um, movement on my, my stepper motor. Um, by the way, I am using assembler, as you can see. And if you're into C, the language C, um, you obviously have stumbled onto the wrong video and you probably want to jump off right now. <laughs> but um, this is all in assembler and um, I don't actually know much about C, so I can't help you there. Um, anyhow, the next two lines are trying to isolate um, the last three bits of register 20 because I'm trying to create um, a one of eight selection in order to um, look at a table down here that has one of eight different steps built into it. So when I uh, move literal into W7 and then you add that with register 20, I will isolate the last three bits of register 20 and drop it into the working register W. Um, in doing so, I create a, you know, a, a selection of one of eight and I'm going to call the output routine, which is this thing down here, and I will then um, select one of these eight choices here by adding the W to the file register 02. And 02 is actually a, um, the program counter. So when I add, let's say, a 3 onto the program counter, it instantly jumps down here. It passes three steps. So um, 3 on top of where it is right there, if that was the last thing it did was add W to file register 2, 3 plus that would be 0, 1, 2, 3. It landed right there. It would grab the 12 and put it into the working... Oh, sorry about that. My camera <laughs> is not in the right spot. Um, it grabbed the 12, put it in the working register, and bring it back up because it's returning with 12 in W, right? Comes back from the, re um, the call, and next thing it does is it puts the W into, or the working register, into file register 5, which is um, the output of the pin. It takes it, um, that value and puts it right on um, the pins of this chip here, right? Right there. Anyhow, um, that is all it does right there. Um, that might sound like a fairly simple program, but what it's really doing is every time you increment 20 um, and it grabs the last three bits, it will go down here and obviously grab each time the next consecutive piece of data. And it will steadily take this, these bits of data and put them on the input output or the output uh, pins of the chip and eventually onto the wires. So for example, Let's say um, 12. If it takes a 12 right there and it puts it on the output, which would be, um, well, let's see, 12 would be, sorry about that, my camera skills are really something else. Okay, so that's the output onto um, register 5, right? Well, uh, I'm actually not using these two right here, they're just inputs. Um, these two right here are heading for that coil, and these two are heading for that coil. Okay, And that will cause a high on one lead and a low on the other, and a high on one and a low on the other. Um, eventually it cycles around and it grabs each one of these things. But in doing so, it changes the voltages on the, the different types of coil, on the different sides of the coils. For instance, um, a 21 would take the value like this, 2 and 1, like that, right? And would, of course, take these values and put them on, well, in this case, opposite directions. So it'd be um, a high and a low instead of a low and a high on that coil. <clears throat> and the same with this right here. It would actually be flipping it around. But, um, it, you know, I guess the, the, <laughs> you, you look at all these numbers and it does actually look very jumbly, but it does make sense um, if you sat down and figured out what you need to make that coil or that 
that stepper motor spin, these numbers are very exact um, because they are pulsing the coil the right way or the the coils the right way. Anyhow, um, I at this point the the signals have been thrown onto the output of the um, the port and it has been received by the stepper motor but we need some time for the stepper motor to catch up because it's made out of um, a mass and a mass has a problem of not being able to catch up with um, the speed of electronics so this is a maybe a four or three uh, millisecond delay for um, the motor to catch up to the step I've just sent it okay and that's only one step out of 400 to make the thing turn anyhow um, it says go to start at this point, runs back up and repeats again, increments 20 to the next value and puts it through the routine and grabs the next step and keeps going back up. So this will run through uh, 400 times to make this motor turn one full revolution. That's pretty crazy, hey? It's a lot happy inside these chips to make that motor turn. Um, Anyhow, let's um, put this into the chip and put it down on the board and make that motor turn. Actually, um, let me put a, uh, a pen onto here. Back in a sec. Okay, there's my tape up job. Um, it should hold together for a little while. And um, okay, so the chip here, um, I just drop it into my programmer and. I do a quick build. It's called Untitled. <laughs> okay, so that worked out well as soon as it um, built it. Okay, so um, in order to program it, I am going to program it with just the internal oscillator um, because I'm saving on a couple I.O. pins doing that. I always turn off my watchdog timer as well and I like to have my GP3 as an, a digital I.O. port. Um, as mentioned my um, brownout detection is disabled because there's so much EMF coming off of this um, stepper motor I'd probably reset my chip continuously because of that but the brownout ain't that bad. Um, I've never had a chip blow up in this sort of situation so it's fine. Anyhow, um, program. program. Uh, it's telling me it doesn't like what I do. That's fine. So, down here is programming. And it's good. So the chip now has that program there tucked into it. Um, so let me put it on this board here somewhere. Maybe I'll put it right there. And uh, give me a minute to uh, wear out these things here. Okay, so um, I've added my wires onto my processor there and um, as mentioned the black and the green do go together with one winding and the other winding is the red and the blue on pins um, well on port bits uh, 0 and 1 and 4 and 5 anyhow let me just throw my, um, my voltages on here I believe that um, um, ground is there. Oh yeah, this thing's going to spin around and bang into the table if I don't do something. There goes my mouse. So I'll just drag this over to the edge here. <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually trying to control a camera and a pile of electronics at the same time. Anyhow, um, positive on to pin. Okay, so as you can see, all it's doing is doing rotations, right? And um, our next project will just uh, will cause it so it has a variety of different movements going forward and backwards. And uh, there you go. So let me just uh, pull the chip. And okay, that's um, pretty much the entirety of the program right there. Um, it's maybe another 20 lines but it does a heck of a lot more and um, 
Let me just scroll this a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. So I'm not going to explain this to you really. Um, it's something that you probably want to read over yourself. You got the gist of how the stepper motor does work, but this will um, move the stepper motor on a huge variety of different um, steps. I've only put in eight steps or hmm, eight movements here. Um, what I've done is I've said that the uh, most significant bit, which this here line has one in there, it will cause the stepper motor to turn in the opposite direction, counterclockwise. Whereas this movement right here will go 128 steps, that's what 7F is, right? 180, 28 steps clockwise. This one will go counterclockwise, 128, and so forth, so so on all the way down until you get to the zero zero here, which is um, telling the whole program to stop because it's finished its entire um, routine. But yeah, this lookup table, it could be a, a thousand movements if you wanted. I've only put in eight because uh, I'm not going to type it all in. But yeah, so um, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth four times. So um, my chip is in the programmer and project is quick built and it's good okay so um, same thing my um, setup for my oscillator is internal uh, watchdog timer is disabled GP3 digital brownout detect is disabled and program it's gonna ask me some questions I'm gonna say that's fine and it's going to program that chip. Great. So pull the chip, drop it in here, and I can figure out how to pick it up. And let me think. Um, so this is going to sweep back and forth a few times. Which way? Will <laughs> Wrong way. See, so put that over there. And <laughs> doesn't do a heck of a lot, does it? Um, um, interesting little point um, to note. Let me just make sure this doesn't cause me problems. Um, if you actually do power up your um, your stepper motor with more power and you do try and run to its maximum speed, you're going to find you're going to have to build a deacceleration and acceleration um, routine into the steps because as um, anything that has mass accelerates, it can't accelerate to top speed right away. It actually has to be gradually accelerated and same thing with stopping. It does have to kind of gradually stop if you, you're to turn it around the other way. So um, an acceleration deacceleration program would be quite simple and all you do in the case is instead of having um, a delay like this right here where it comes along it's always a set amount of delay you actually increase the delay longer um, which is that variable not that it matters <coughs> um, so that as the the mass is um, wanting to start up let's say to top speed you'd actually gradually get it going by changing your, your delay between your steps for the first 20 or 30 steps. So it, it would gradually accelerate so the mass does catch up. And then you can run to full speed. But um, I'm running <laughs> maybe only two RPM, so it's not that significant. Um, you do see the motor hop a little bit, but that's just because it's trying to turn around from a full two RPM. But can you imagine if you're running 30 RPM? <laughs> Anyhow. Um, I actually didn't need my, my capacitor I was going to drop in there, but if you actually do try and run these things, sometimes it's good to throw a capacitor onto the chip um, so that it filters out the, the MF. <laughs>